buddy. Yeah, baby. How's it going? It's going good. How good you doing? Good morning. High five. You feeling better? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. We were both sick at the same time, <laughs> which was kind of funny, but yeah, we're both like, I'd say 95% back. Yeah, Maybe about 90, there. 92 might be a little more accurate. Yes. Thank there you, you so much. Oh, Obviously, you have to start the morning with, uh, with coffee. Um, this coffee, diner coffee, surprisingly, is uh, it's quite delicious. Sometimes it's just like, it's just right on the money. Should I get a steak for breakfast? How about a grilled cheese? How about a white tuna salad plate? Greek omelet? I could get a cheeseburger. The smoked salmon plate is good. Organic oh, yogurt with the works. The French connection. Sunset super. Eggs Florentine. Pancakes. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. I think I might actually get a grilled cheese, because <laughs> I'm seven. Should be long enough. I guess I should have hit record for that time. No. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Best filmmaker prank ever. <laughs> it's such a beautiful day for filming. I know. We always we always get the best days when I shoot with Gabriel. It's, the sun is out and it's always just abundantly clear. Do you use a GoPro? I do, but just for like family stuff, not for production work at all. It never looks like it does on the GoPro's website. That is my oh, complaint. Absolutely. Their their website footage looks immaculate. Yeah, it oh, looks I like have this I... camera was strapped <laughs> like a bird's beak, and then I'm like pumped, and I rip it open, and I'm like, no, no, not even close. No, like I bookmarked all their you know GoPro videos and stuff, and I look at their footage and I look at mine, and it's... we're gonna go shoot some random stock GoPro footage and try to make it not look crappy. I have a few tips and a few tricks that I do. Let's go to that spot. I'm looking forward to watching this video. Yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go to that spot and shoot some stuff. All right. Okay. Do you remember what we shot here? Smoke. I'll I'll link it. I'll put the little the, the smoke the, grenades. The little uh, that goes up in there. Extremely cold in this cornfield, but I thought it would be great because you got those linear lines Everything's symmetrical to show off a little bit of movement with the GoPro now One of the things that I've learned to get better footage is to not have it on like super view or super wide because it just distorts the image too much so having it on something like linear is actually gonna make that footage feel a little more like an actual camera, not an action camera. So that would be tip number one, is to actually flip that over to linear view and then we'll do some magic in post to make it, you know, not as not as GoPro-ish. That's, I think, the key, is to make it look not as GoPro footage as possible. Also, how good does the light in here look right now? It's fantastic. Dude, it got cold fast. It, like, really fast. What happened? It's Canada. Dude, it was it's like, Canada. oh, and get this, so it's supposed to be, you ready? 12 degrees tomorrow. <laughs> oh, dude, you're the best. I you're will see best. you. Have a great day. All right, you too. And uh, enjoy the coffee. Thank you very much. Go get warm. More when you need it. Where's the heat? It is way too cold outside to shoot right now. Your fingers are numb and it just makes it so hard to get anything done. Okay, we're talking stabilization, warp stabilizer, obviously taking all the precautions to move as, as slowly and meticulously as you can to avoid camera shake, that kind of thing. Now there's also things to help camera shake specifically with GoPro and that is their Karma Grip. I don't have one yet. Another great tip is uh, actually shooting in a flat color profile. GoPro calls it ProTune, so essentially that gives your camera and the image sensor a better dynamic range, which retains more detail in the sky and in the image, which makes it easier to actually color grade and post. It's probably easier if I show you that in studio. It might make a little more sense being able to screen share, so I think we'll do that. But first, 
Uh, I'm gonna show you guys where I got my first job at a camera shop. Ugh. I used to work here. I'm gonna see if they have that GoPro Karma thing so I could do the whole Steadicam gimbal review test. All right. <laughs> Ugh. I brought you my coffee. Oh. Oh, That's for you. Thank you. It's very. I didn't bring any for you. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> I brought some for you though, Brian. What's that? I brought you my coffee. Oh, get out of here. That's for you. High Give me five. Boosh. Okay, I gotta ask you. T talk to me, Goose. GoPro. What's your opinion on GoPro? I've been asking everybody. I think GoPro is awesome. I mean, it depends on what you're using it for. If uh, the quality of the newer ones is better than like my three plus black. Three plus black, that's like from the 90s. <laughs> I mean, for what you're doing, I can understand going for it because you're all over the place and you can mount this karma to your buckle here and you can do all your crazy, you know, boarding and... Total salesman right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, when you have a full frame, like a 1DX Mark II, you got this massive sensor and then you're dealing with a little GoPro sensor. That's There's true. a huge difference in depth of field and dynamic range and all kinds of stuff, right? So. Sensor size. Totally forgot about the sensor size. Henry's New Market, Peter speaking. Good, how are you? Yes. The X what? The X70. Uh, I will check on that. Let me check the stock. Hang on a second. X, what's an X70? Fuji X70. Fuji X70. Hey, it's actually uh, it's discontinued. There's none in stock. Yeah, yeah, I know. It is what it is. Yep. All right, man. Yeah, have a good one. Dude, just like old times. <laughs> <laughs> this was my jam. This was my section right here. This is where I stood. I stood like this. This was the. Uh, this was the Literally, old that was the this, post. This is the old PM lean. Wait, wait, wait. Hang Either on. you were there or you were under this? the counter. A little bit of this action here. Double tap and IGs. This is actually where I got like my whole start into like the world of photography and cinematography was working with other people and like-minded individuals selling this stuff, which gave me like a huge one up. So. Uh, yeah, fun fact, little sidebar, if you want to get into this stuff, getting a job at a camera shop is a, a hell of a good idea. Oh. Henry's New Market, Peter speaking. Hey. This guy's been around, <laughs> I've learned so much from you. I was telling everybody I a lot from how you. much <laughs> I learned from you. This guy started like the first Canon Pro Service account. You were number That's one. That's true. <laughs> he's Where's like, he's stuff? like the grandfather of Canon. I love Martin. <laughs> Why are the lights still blinking? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're just still laughing over here. <laughs> here, have you ever held a vlog camera? No, I haven't, but there we go. one hand it. Tell us about your day. Been a great day waiting for Peter. This is like waiting for Godot. Do you know who Godot is? <laughs> you don't, do you? <laughs> no. Remember, I'm like 100 years younger than you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> exactly 100. <laughs> Dude, now the power is out. I what is going on? All right, guys, we have five minutes to rob this place fast. Wow, I literally made it just in time because as you saw, the power went out and they just closed the store. So I guess because they know me, they just took my information and sent me packing with what I need to finish this video. So apparently uh, you have to update this Karma Grip before you can use it. And you gotta plug that into your laptop to run the update. So I'm gonna have to go do that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so I've come back out. It's the evening now. I've got about 20 minutes left of light. It's even more cold than it was this morning. But I wanted to get a few shots with the GoPro in the Karma Grip. It's not fully charged. I didn't wanna wait, I think, I think they said it takes six hours to fully charge this thing, which I'm not down with, but via like a normal small little USB wall outlet. I think they have a charger that does it in like half the time, but I don't want to spend another $80 to, to do that. Just a couple extra shots with the Karma Grip. Uh, see how that works. See if it works any better.
All right, so there you have it. A couple clips, nothing special because it's freezing outside and I'm not really anywhere where there's awesome footage to be had, but enough to see if this is actually any better than hand holding it. Now, a couple of the clips there, I did run full speed, just like I've done with the Movi, so I wanna see how much camera shake is picked up by big, heavy footsteps. So another tip to get really cool looking footage with your GoPro is to add map bars to it. Adding map bars, like the widescreen top and bottom bars, anamorphic bars make any kind of footage look a lot more cinematic you'll notice i do it with my b-roll segments so throwing those on top of your gopro footage will instantly make it look better and more professional than if you didn't have it my opinion so so far we've talked about stabilizing your gopro footage with something like the karma grip that gopro offers themselves to get that extra buttery smooth footage to rival something like that of a movie or a steadicam on a much smaller scale to help with this. We've also talked about using a flat color profile to get better results when you're color grading in post. You're gonna get more dynamic range, you're gonna get more out of the footage shooting on a flat profile. We've talked about adding matte bars, anamorphic bars to the top and bottom to kind of give off that fake cinematic feeling that you get when you're watching a professional video or something in the theaters. Now when you add those things together with your color grading and your editing skills and stabilization of those clips and your final map bars, you get something that looks a lot better than someone that's just standard shooting with a GoPro with the base settings it comes with when you take it out of the package. So back to those settings, I figured I would at least tell you guys what my settings are so you can kind of replicate them if you wanted to do that. I have the shutter on auto so that it auto comp for the exposure if I go into a dark room or if I go into a brighter area, the, the camera's gonna auto compensate for that. The ISO minimum is 100 and the ISO max is 800. I have my white balance set to auto for the same reasons if cloud cover is different than when I'm in a forest, than when I'm in a car, than when I'm outside. I don't wanna have to worry about switching this particular camera every single time. I'd rather worry about that on my main camera. I have my sharpness set to medium. That's something that can be very important. If you have the sharpness too high on a GoPro, it looks really bad really fast. So make sure it's not on the highest setting, either medium or low would be what I recommend. Um, I keep the color profile to flat, which is called ProTune. So you'll see that little PT on the side of your GoPro settings when you're, when you're doing that. And I have the audio set to medium. So with these settings, I'm able to get a nice cinematic looking footage with my GoPro. It's not where I would particularly like it to be yet, but it's getting close. One more thing to keep in mind is like I mentioned out in that cornfield is shooting linear. Uh, super view and super wide very easily give off the feel that you're using an action cam and a GoPro. It looks too GoPro-y, if you know what I mean. So by switching over to linear, it gets rid of that weird bubble fisheye. You throw the map bars on top and it looks a lot more like a regular camera opposed to a sports camera. So that's one of the biggest takeaways, I would say, from this entire video. And then lastly, I think one of the most fun ways to get different types of footage is to actually mount this in as many weird, messed up places as you can. Think about how small this is. This has the advantage of being able to be put almost anywhere. So mounting this upside down near the tailpipe of your car or capturing under the rim of your tires or like I've done before, taping it to my foot. The sky is really the limit with a camera this size and I think that's one of its biggest advantages is to get creative with it. GoPro offers so many different accessories to mount this pretty much anywhere. Uh, the sky really is the limit. Uh, this isn't a paid sponsorship. I, I don't know anybody at GoPro. I've paid for all of this stuff myself. I've been pretty honest on this channel since the beginning that I'm not the biggest fan of GoPro stuff. I want to be. I want to love it. I have like all of it because I, I think the potential is there for it to be great. I'm just always kind of let down with how my footage looks, but it's been turning around as of recently. So hopefully some of these tips will also help you get better footage and kind of enjoy the camera that you may or may not own a little bit more. Okay guys, so that's it for me. I hope you liked this video. Hit that like button if you did. Smash it if that's, you know, something that you're into. Subscribe if you aren't already. And guys, I will see you in the next one.